show me what you've got to lose. Show me a better path to choose. Crying, I can feel your pain, and all I got to say is that we're all the same. So this is where you belong. This is where you belong. Yeah, this is where you. Hello everyone, we are back. Welcome to Barcelona and season 12 of the European Poker Tour. I'm James Hartigan alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello my babies. We're in España for the start of another season and a record-breaking festival. Every tournament has been enorme and the 5K main event is no exception. Yeah, 1,694 entrants. This is the biggest main event in EPT history and the prize pool is in excess of 8.2 million euros. Half of that has already been paid out, with nearly 240 players cashing at Casino Barcelona over the last few days. But there's still more than four million up for grabs at the final table, as eight players compete for the first trophy of the season and a top prize of 1.4 million euros. For poker legend John Juanda, that prize would represent his biggest cash and the title would be his greatest achievement. I think EPT is more prestigious and better than the other tournaments. If I go on to win, it will be the biggest tournament I will ever have won. Juanda won't have it easy. His competitors include a Danish pro who's already won an EPT. Today, Frederick Jensen seeks title number two. I couldn't really grasp how big that would be, but to win a second EPT, that would be amazing. Jensen first tasted victory here in Spain. Local hero Mario Sanchez wants to repeat that success and become the first Spanish player to win on home soil. Pues es realmente con tanto apoyo me he dado cuenta que que sí que o sea que es importante representar a, a España. Meanwhile, Amir Tuma, an amateur already guaranteed his biggest live score to date, aims to become our third Lebanese champ. Of course I want to win, everybody likes to win, but uh, I'm happy with making the final table. British hopes lie with Steve Warburton. He's a regular face on the tour, and he expects to have the support of many of his countrymen. There's been some notoriously good British rails, especially in EPTs. I want as much noise and as much fun as possible. You can never discount the online qualifiers. Both Rainer Kemper and Andreas Samuelsson are determined to make their mark. Win one of those main events. That's what I've been trying to do the last three or four years. But the man they're all chasing is Ukrainian cash specialist Denis Shafakov. He has the biggest stack, 33% of the chips in play and a steely demeanor. Who will win the biggest EPT ever? So here's the lineup at the first final table of season 12 of the PokerStars.com European Poker Tour. Wow, Shafikov's got all the chips and he's in a great spot to bully these kids for even more of their lunch money. Warburton and Jensen aren't in the danger zone, but their stacks are awkward. Blinds 80,000, 160,000 with a 20,000 ante. Action's been folded to John Juanda, who has ace king. Ace King for Johnny Hotel Jawanda. Big slick, one of the best in the game for one of the best in the game. We're in the second half of 2015, and this is Jawanda's first tournament of the year. Yeah, he even skipped the World Series this year. Jawanda raises to 320,000. 
Sanchez and Jensen have both folded. Andreas Samuelsson playing EPT Barcelona for the fifth consecutive year has Queens in the cutoff. Well, this is about to get uglier than a low angle selfie. Hashtag no filter. Samuelsson re-raises a three bet to 740K. Shafikov, Tuma, they've both folded. Reina Kemper in the big blind. He's passed, so it's back on Juanda. John's got a hand where he's gonna wanna see all five cards. He re-raises. He four bets to 1.48 million. And Samuelson's got a hand he could never, ever fold. Come on, Samuelson shoves, and Jawanda calls all in. We're gonna flip. A classic race, arguably the sickest of them all. Classic because it's classic, sick because there are millions of euros on the line. Jawanda at risk and behind. And that's a safe flop for Queens. Jawanda now a three to one underdog. Flops like this are the reason why Jawanda wants to see all five cards. Nine on the turn, and Jawanda is going out in eighth place. Unless a king or an ace hits the river, he has six outs. There's an ace! Jawanda doubles up. Hurts so much more when it happens on the river. You gotta feel for the Swede losing that flip and left with just 12 big blinds. You were hanging last night. <laughs> no, don't tell me now, but we tell each other later. When yeah, 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 no worries, John, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, cannot tell now. Jawanda is referring to the last hand of day five. He made a huge laydown to Steve Warburton. It was the final hand of the day, and I was in the big line with Pocket Kings. That is a four bet from Jawanda. The action went back to Steve. Warburton shoves. It was a tough hand for me to play because in a tournament I have to consider you know, K jump and the short stacks. Steve displaying the red triangle of death to his rail. Let it go, John. <laughs> He's got you under cover. This is all in to call. I was leaning toward calling. And then I talked to him. You know, I said I was going to fold if you move all in, but then... I have a face that's very difficult to fold to. Nobody folds to this face. And he just seems so confident. You can only have ace king or ace. That's a strong range. <laughs> you said I can only have aces or ace king? Yes. The more he talked, I thought the chances of him having aces were higher. Either you're a really good talker or you're like... I was just whatever. Oh, yeah. Come on, show it to me. I got a good hand, I've just put five million chips in. Obviously I got a good hand. Yeah. I did not sleep very well last night. I, I played it over and over again in my head. And after I had much more time to think about it, I was like, you know, I think the chances of him having a king was probably much higher than I originally thought. I know this phrase is overused, but folding kings there, I can't even. Well, Joanda mentioned the pay jumps, 137K for the next man out, 1.4 million for the winner. Well, the action's been folded to John. He passes. Look at aces. I haven't seen them for a long, long time. Uh, are, are you sure? Are you sure you didn't just have aces and fold them? King Jack suited for Mario Sanchez. He raises ace king for Frederick Jensen. At this stage, you're really not afraid of getting more chips in preflop with ace king, especially when you're the one betting and raising, not the one calling. He three bets to 910K. Samuelson's out. Shafikov has folded. Tuma has passed. Chop pot t-shirt. Kemper gets out of the way. It's back on Sanchez. The first Spaniard since Samuel Rodriguez in season nine to make the final table of this event. Huh. Well, even though he's out of position and even though he could easily be dominated, I think peeling a flop here is actually fine. Cool. Heads up to the flop. 
Sanchez is also kind of a superstar online. Well, Jensen is still ahead with ace high and a couple of backdoors. Action's been checked to him. And he checks behind. Well, that is an interesting card. Sanchez is now open-ended. Jensen has a gut shot and the nut flush draw. Now, I know Mario thinks he's going to be semi-bluffing here, which he is. But when Jensen three bets pre-flop and then checks back to flop, this queen just crushes his range. Sanchez has bet 950,000. 950? And he's also pretty likely to have a big spade that he's never folding. My eyes aren't so great anymore, James. Does he have a big spade he's never folding? He does indeed, and he has called Sanchez's bet. And that is the sickest possible river card. Sanchez makes it straight, but Jensen has the nuts. It's been checked to the EPT8 Madrid winner. Frederick is gonna bet here, but unless it's something teeny tiny, I think this should be an easy fold. All in. He shoves on Sanchez. Mario is covered here. It's all in to call. Spanish Lance Corporal Hicks is in a really bad spot here. With four spades out there, it's a nuts or air type situation, but it's going to be nuts way more often. A four flush board might save him. Call. It doesn't. He calls it off. It's game over, man. It's game over. Easy. Yeah. That's right. Thank you. Okay. Mario Sanchez unable to follow in the footsteps of the most recent EPT champ, Adrian Mateos. See you. Bye. The last remaining local out in eighth place, cashing for just over 137,000 euros. No, oh, I just realized his online handle is lost to River. Maybe he should have made it Bington, Barcelona. <laughs> Sick River. Yeah, what a river. Nothing gets by that Juan except occasionally Kings. Frederick Jensen now second in chips and eyeing his second EPT title. Hello, my babies. Want to listen to more of my jokes and embarrassing stories without poker getting in the way? Subscribe to EPT Not Live on iTunes or download it from soundcloud.com slash EPT Not Live. There's guests, competitions, online dating. You can even get some behind the scenes gossip on the show you're watching right now. That's right, more layers than an advanced Rubik's Cube, which has two layers. More layers than that, EPT Not Live. After losing the last remaining Spaniard, Mario Sanchez, the carnage has continued at the PokerStars.com EPT Barcelona final table. John Juanda eliminated Amir Tuma in the very next hand. And now, short stack Andreas Samuelson is all in, and Steve Warburton has woken up with a monster. Pretty good hand. He calls with aces, and Samuelson's on the verge of elimination. Hmm, I call is still kind of a slow roll. Just kidding, but, but a little bit of a slow roll. Hang in there, Spike Haxton. He's got a hand I've not seen yet, and I've got the best hand in poker <laughs> currently. <laughs> Samuelson has Jack-10, a 17% chance of survival. Hey. I'll take a sweat. I'm having such a good time. I've like a queen eight four. Not that it matters, but it's the ace of diamonds. Here comes the flop. Top set for Steve. That's a pretty good flop. A gut shot for Samuelson. Nine ball. Okay. The Swedish qualifier survives with a queen on the river. It's a seven. It is always coming seven. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Come on, Steve. Come on, Steve. Come on, Steve. Come on, Steve. Let's go. Good luck. Unlucky, buddy. Good, luck. Good game. Nice. Four ball. Nice one, Rolf. Ace. Good luck, wow. <laughs> Sick. What a life, yeah, what a life. I looked down at one ace, I was like, how much is it? Oh, never mind. <laughs> First the Von Trapp family, then Andreas Samuelson. Sad. He cashes for more than a quarter of a million and will be consoled by his girlfriend, Farah. Maybe he can at least get her a real purse now. Plastic bag. Steve's being railed by his girlfriend, Jess. Sitting right next to Rebecca America and Julia Belgium. 
So we're five-handed now, and the blinds are up to 100,000, 200,000 with a 25,000 ante. Actions on Rainer Kemper. He folds the button. Steve Warburton has another monster. Kings in the small blind. Warburton, this guy's running like the war horse. Raises to half a million. Ace nine, the hand for Juanda in the big blind. Even though we know John folded a monster to this guy before, that was a totally different situation and not an ace in the big blind. Juanda defends. A six tray deuce flop. Steve now an 85% favorite with his overpair. He continues for 375,000. John's in a position now, though, where calling this flop bet is pretty reasonable with ace nine high. He does call. The turn card is a jack. Steven, even bigger favorite now. Yeah, this is a pretty sweet board for kings. There's nothing really to freak out about here. And there is lots to value bet about. Eight hundred and fifty thousand into nearly one point nine million. Once again, John de calls. John thinks Steve's going to be barreling there a high percentage of the time, no matter what, and that call makes sense too. So now we've got more than three point five million in the middle, and John de catches a piece on the river. Second pair on board. That card is. Just terrible for John Juanda. Now he's beating a lot more bluffs and maybe even some thin value bets. I think Rolf's about to deliver a value gram. Nearly 1.8 million. Something tells me no matter what happens in this hand, Matty DeMulder and Fraser McIntyre are going to have a drink about it. Juanda calls! And Warburton wins a huge pot. Hey, John, remember yesterday when you folded kings to him? Yeah. Warburton now with a stack of 13.9 million. He is second in chips. And not only does he have Matty DeMulder on his rail, the two are actually sharing an apartment here in Barcelona. That's the first time I've been to Barcelona. There's a group of us, five or six. Matty was in charge of booking the accommodation. The apartment is not very luxurious. We call it the orphanage because it's pretty grotesque. It's not as bad as they say it is. Kind of dirty. I actually kind of like it out there. We have cockroaches in the, uh, in the bathroom and the kitchen. It gives it more like an adventurous touch to it, doesn't it? You know, it's just, it's just horrible, really. To be honest, it looked a lot better on the pictures. You can never take English for their words, you know, they're just, they moan. I'm British, I moan quite a lot. It was me booking it, but Steve was there as well, so he shouldn't blame all on me. Matty DeMolder will never be booking my accommodation ever again. To be fair, most of us look better in our photos online. Well, on this hand, there has been an under-the-gun raise from Rainer Kemper, who has ace-king. It's been folded to Denis Shafakov, who's got king-queen suited in the big blind. And he has re-raised a three-bet to 900,000. Yeah. Kemper, the qualifier, responds by shoving. Oh, Dennis, what have you done to yourself? Why did you have to three-bet? Now you gotta call it off with one of the best post-flop hands in the deck. Shafikov calls. And sees that he is dominated. Kemper in a great spot here to double up through the chip leader. Domination Nation in Germany is looking good. The flop. Has not one but two queens on it. Trips for Shafikov. That is gross. That is grosser than the underside of my driver's seat. Rainer Kemper needs to see something on the turn. Oh, he's drawing dead. 
The Reina is over. Out in fifth place. He qualified for 320 euros. He cashes for more than 320,000. That's pretty good. Shafak House like, <laughs> me, really? All right, stop it. Mainly a cash game player, so guaranteed the biggest result of his tournament career here in Barcelona. He's going to move up on that hotly contested Ukraine all-time money list. Nice. Four-handed with blinds now 125-250 with a 25k ante. Steve Warburton under the gun with pocket fours. He raises to 500,000. King Jack for John Joander on the button. With John Stack and a pretty wide opening range from Warburton, I think this has got to go in. All in. He shoves. Frederick Jensen has folded. Shafikov's woken up with ace king suited in the big. He could re raise, but calling's probably better. He does just call. Leaves himself room to fold to a shove from Warburton. Steve looking back at his hand. He calls as well. So Juanda is all in and at risk, and there's the potential of action on the side between Shafikov and Warburton. Bad news, he's dominated. Good news, he wins, he triples up. And Juanda has flopped best, pairing his jack. Great flop for him. Check, check, between Shafikov and Warburton. Deuce on the turn, Juanda now an 88% favorite to triple up. Check to the river. And Jawanda's gonna get that triple up. Boom. Check to showdown. There's a reason we call him Luckbox Jawanda, and that's because he picked it as his handle, but he's also kind of lucky sometimes. Up to 8.1 million. What's going on? You guys are lucky for me. Yeah, it's nice of Samuelson and his girlfriend to stick around. Everyone here in Barcelona thrilled to see John Juanda back at a poker table. I actually haven't been playing uh, any tournament this year. I basically made a bunch of prop bets with my friends. We were talking about pull-ups and then he was like, okay, I'll bet you you cannot do 20. We also have a running bet and a Japanese language proficiency bet. That bet was as big as the first prize for this tournament. Then I decided to cancel all my tournament schedule. I dedicated myself to uh, training and study. We uh, finished the bet. I wanted to go out and play poker. Poker is not so different from maybe other sports or game of skills. Being away from the game for so long definitely hurt me. And uh, hopefully uh, I can play well and not make too many mistakes. If I go on to win this tournament, it'll be the biggest tournament I will ever have won. Those abs though. I wish one of my friends would pay me a million dollars to get a sick body. Ah, uh, Elki's now on the rail. He's good friends with John Juanda. You know, Elki is Sasha Baron Cohen's best character ever. Action here is on Joanda. He folds. Frederick Jensen on the button with tens, raises to 500k. More like Frederick Tenson. Aces for Shafikov. I don't think he'll tank too hard when he gets shoved on this time. He three bets to 1.45 million. Steve folds. All in. Jensen shoves, and Shafikov calls. Two Shafikov got pretty lucky with King Queen before. Jensen's gonna need to get luckier. Not looking good for the former EPT champ. Shafikov, a huge favorite. Frederick Tenson is gonna need to be Frederick Ten Ten Tenson. The flop is jack 7-6. Shafikov an even bigger favorite now. There is nothing on the board for Jensen to get excited about. 
A king on the turn, and the Dane's two-time dream is practically dead. Only a ten saves him. Ten on the river! Wow. <laughs> what a reaction from Jensen. He did it. Fellas, come on. I don't know what kind of boys from Brazil thing they got going on over there, but those dudes all look identical. Jensen up to 9.8 million. He now has more than Shafakov, the start of day chip leader. Nice hand, Brad. It got a little exciting. Cracking aces in the biggest EBT ever? Pretty exciting. Do you want to feel the excitement of the EPT? Qualify now at PokerStars.com. Barcelona has seen its fair share of bold bluffs and bad beats over the years. And before the break, we witnessed one of the sickest moments in the history of the PokerStars.com EPT. Season 8 Madrid champ Frederick Jensen ran pocket tens into Denis Shafakov's aces. With one card to come, Jensen had one foot out of the door. But a 10 on the river kept him alive. And Shafakov, who should have been ship leader, is now the short stack. What goes around comes around, except for you. You get unluckier than everyone else. Lines are up to 150,000, 300,000, with a 50,000 ante. Actions on Frederick Jensen. He folds. Shafikov on the button. Has queen 10. Oh. And he shoves with it. Blinds are huge. It's pretty standard. Round to John Juanda in the big blind. A6. A call would also be pretty standard mathematically. Uh, looks like they want me to call. <laughs> of course they do. Uh, I, I have to call. Yes, you do. Shafikov at risk and behind, but he does have two live cards. The flop sees Joanda pair his six. Shafikov still with live cards. He survives by hitting a queen or a ten. Six outs for the Ukrainian. Joanda Rivers trips and Shafikov is heading off for the exit. Shafikov gets the Shafikov. He starts the day as chip leader and will no doubt be disappointed with his fourth place finish. His consolation prize, 405,000 euros. Sometimes you eat the bear, sometimes the bear eats you. You guys want to look at numbers? Don't get carried away, John. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess we can do that. Yeah. Have a look. You can always say no, right? You know. No, I don't. I, I, I don't, don't really care. Or... Yeah, you, we, we can take a look. Uh, uh, just take a look. Yeah, we're gonna take all the numbers. Yeah. Uh, can you call the so the final three are about to discuss a potential deal. It'll be interesting to see how they propose breaking down the remaining prize money based on those chip stacks. Tournament director Toby Stone is at the table. You pay 30. Uh, I pay like 32 and a half. You pay like 37 and a half, maybe? That'd be the... <laughs> You're the squeezer. No, no, no. no. That's the like the most fair way to do it. All right. Can I just ask? Can I just ask? Yeah, just be quick. Be quick. Can be quick. For Aldo, quick. We've got like two minutes. This is pretty complicated, but we're going to do ICM. All right, but they've got to take out like 100 and 120? They've got to take out 100. got to take out 100. So yeah. they're basically suggesting that they take 37 and a half off mine, 30 off Fred's, and what off his? 32. 32 and a half and 37 32 and a half. 32 and a half. So basically, I'm basically giving up to them. If you're wanting to do, if you're wanting to do a literal fair ICM three-way chop, yeah. then the remaining money, because you start with more chips, you should give up a little bit more. Yeah. Our price price money is, you know, is bigger than his. Mr. Jawanda, so uh, listen to me. I will, I will accept the deal if you buy the first round of drinks. Yeah, yeah, we'll take care of Yeah? All right. Take my hand, take my hand. We got a deal? They did it! Slightly more even than the advertised payouts. They're guaranteed those numbers on the left 
with the winner getting an additional 100,000 euros. John the squeezer, do you want to know? We're going to call it for now. <laughs> now, if you could just sign in blood right there. All right, thank you. Okay, so. Yeah, let's go. Let's carry on, guys. Sure. Now we can make some Thanks. noise. Come on. <laughs> Got to be a great feeling to have all that money locked up. Of course, there's still the title and the trophy on the line. They were worried about this lasting too long based on what happened last year. Yeah. Last year's tournament still has not concluded. Action on Juanda. He folds. Aces for Frederick Jensen. He raises small to big, 850k. Jack, 10 of clubs for Steve Warburton. Super easy hand to defend in the big blind. Not super easy to crack aces with, though. And not super easy to commentate with all that nonsense going on in the background. Oh, come on. They're just having fun. Interesting flop. Jensen's ace is still good. Warburton has an open-ended straight draw. Pretty good flop for aces, but one more spade or... Will you guys knock it off? I knew you'd see things my way sooner or later. Is it nine? Is it nine? They've got the wrong musical. Steve calls the C-bet of 900K. Six of spades on the turn, changes nothing. Denson probably was hoping to see a not spade there. And it looks like we're about to see a bluff on a three flush board. A bet of 1.3 million. I don't think Warburton can rep a flush super easy here. The bet quickly called by Jensen. I like the way Jensen's playing this, trying to induce bluffs and not get raised off his hand. Well, the board has bricked out for Steve. He's left with just jack high. Jensen has checked to him for a second time. Wise. And Steve does not try to bluff again. He checks behind. Also probably wise. Wow. One more time. That was home. Was a good check? <laughs> I do not think Steve was calling you with jack high. And Frederick Jensen is now closing in on the chip lead. Madrid, that was memorable. Because I played the heads up there perfectly and ended up winning it. To stand up with the trophy and with all the money and just this feeling that you beat everybody else and there's no room for disappointment at all because you did the best. I was just so relieved ending up winning it. There was an amazing feeling. To win a second DPC, I couldn't really grasp how big that would be, but it would be an amazing feeling, and I'm looking forward to experiencing it. Ah, oh, there's another Danish EPT winner on the rail, Yannick Rang. Did he? Did he leave a message? Fraser McIntyre supporting Steve. He was the runner-up to Jensen in Madrid. At least until Feraldo comes back, he's got that as well. How can you have oh, it just give, 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 give us the whole FC, it's like tradition. Yeah, we're going to Red one, we're going Red to Barcelona tradition, aren't we? And EPT10 Barcelona champ Tom Middleton is another Steve Warburton supporter. I think drinking is more the tradition, the hats are just a side effect. Pocket 10s for Steve. Blinds now 200-400. That's a raise to 800,000. Queen eight for Frederick Jensen. Three-handed, this is a perfectly okay hand to defend with. Time to get swifty in here. Jensen flops best, top pair. Real swifty. The action goes check, check. Another four on the turn. Jensen now a 95% favorite. He checks a second time. A better queen would probably bet, but this is going to work out fine anyway for Jensen. Delayed C bet coming from Steve, 800,000. <laughs> Keep it on. I thought the hats was a finished thing. Nope, still just a drinking thing. 
He wins, it'll be epic. He loses. I prefer it on John. Yeah. The ensign has called. And a third four on the river gives both players a full house. Jensen's is better. He checks a third time. Even though we know Warburton's got the loser, this is a pretty tough spot to check back. Jensen's mostly going to have a six and ace highs. A bet of 2.1 million. Quickly called by Jensen. Walking in a warby wonderland. Yeah. That was awkward. Hey, somebody wake up the Danes. They're on it. They're on it. Unlike that hat. <laughs> Burn the hat. Burn the hat. And the Danish rail has just ordered some cocktails. Looks like white Russians. The dude abides. While Middy's in the doghouse. At least put it on, Middy. Like, it's disrespectful. It's your punishment now. It's your punishment. Is that head tiny or is his head huge? Blinds are now 250,000, 500,000. Around to Juanda in the small blind. Queen seven. He completes. The ensign with Jack 10 checks his option. Once again, two very standard hands for this stage of the tournament. Well, it's top pair for Jensen, second pair for Joanda. John checks. You can't see bet when you don't raise pre-flop, and besides, this is already a good hand to try to get the showdown. Frederick bets with the best hand, 600,000. And Joanda calls. The turn card. Here's a queen, Juanda, now with two pair and a commanding favorite. That is a hell of a card for Juanda. He checks a second time. Jensen bets a second time, 1.6 million. Jensen wants Juanda to call with a seven, just not a seven and another pair. Juanda's not calling. He's raising. He check raises to 4.8 million. Jensen should really only be calling here if he thinks Joanda's the type to run some kind of crazy bluff. I'm not sure he is in this spot. Jensen calls the race. Joanda's certainly capable of semi-bluffing, but if you think that's the case, you should probably just check back. 12 million in the middle, and Joanda rivers a full house. Oh. He shoves on Jensen. Great spot for John to shove. All the draws missed, so if he wants to make it look like he's got a busted draw, this is probably also exactly what he'd do. Jensen calls, and he's out! It was a hero call, and sometimes the hero dies at the end. Good game. Good game, man. We lose Frederick Jensen. Good game, man. Good game, man. All right, good luck, guys. Lots of chips for John Juanda. No second EPT title for the Dane. Ah, this smoked. <laughs> and the Warburton Rail is ready to partay. It's not over yet, and Juanda has a monster chip lead. We're heads up at the PokerStars.com EPT Barcelona, where poker legend John Juanda has a four to one chip lead over UK pro Steve Warburton. There's a sense of deja vu about this situation. In London five years ago, Juanda also held a four to one chip lead over another young Brit, David Van Plu. Calling. Calling. Call. Raise on him and call. Raise the mats. David, sure. John Juanda is on the verge of winning his first EPT title. He has to sweat a club, which will see Van Plue double up. Is John Juanda the third champion of EPT7? It's no, it's a club on the river. The nut flush for Van Plue gives him the double up. And now it's David Van Plue who's on the verge of winning his first EPT title. 
David Van Plew could be crowned the winner of EPT London, and he is. The Scotsman has done it. Juanda, second in the High Roller event two years ago, second in the main event in 2010. Can Juanda finally close it out? As the heads up battle begins in this, the biggest EPT main event of all time. It's 39 million plays, 11.6 million, with the blinds at 250,000, 500,000. And Juanda has raised the button with a six. Ace king for Warburton. Morning. He shoves. All right, I got my lucky hand here. I busted the chip lead over this hand. Sorry? I call. Right. And Juanda calls! Well, this could be the first double up of a Warburton comeback. Ace King VA6. Ace King VA6. That's lucky, that's lucky, bro. That's really lucky. Tom Middleton overcome with the motion. Juanda has Ace6, really. Ace King VA6. Of course, if Juanda gets lucky, it's all over. It's a low flop. Spade, spades are good. Spade, spade is good. Spades are good, but the board pairing again is good for Jawanda. Turn card is a nine. Ooh. We're just, we're just, we're just embracing it. Down. Just embracing it. <laughs> Warburton only loses if a six hits. If you've had too much to drink, the nine might look like a six. Of course, a six gives Jawanda the win. There are a few chop opportunities. The river card. Is a queen, Steve doubles up. I think some of them were cheering before the card even came out. Gotta make some noise now, come on. Yeah, I got it. I think they were making plenty of noise before. <coughs> <coughs> Quiet. All right, now we got a game. <laughs> got a battle now, Joe. Now we got a game. Indeed, it is almost even. They really do got a game, those stacks, though. Ace four, the hand for Warburton. <coughs> Four million. He raises. We've only seen one of Juanda's cards, the Jack of Hearts. My guess is if he's folding, he would have done it already. He re-raises a three bet to 2.75 million. 27. I don't think Steve's folding an ace pre-flop, but I also think he probably doesn't want to pile it in with a hand that could be totally dominated. He calls in position. So 5.6 million in the pot already. And it's a jack high flop, so we know Jawanda has the best hand with at least top pair. See bad incoming. He continues for 3.2 million. Should have thought about this hand. And Steve faults. So Jawanda gets some back and puts a bit of distance between them. And John's friend Eric Seidel has showed up to offer his support. Pretending to be here to rail John, but really just super early for tomorrow's event. Have you seen the lines? 30 million plays, 20 million. Blinds up to 300,000, 600,000. Joanda with Queens. He raises to 1.2 million. Pocket eights for Steve. This could be the one, ladies and germs. H is a monster heads up. That's a re-race. 2.6 million. H is a monster and Queens is such a big monster it could be played by Charlize Theron in dual roles. Juanda responds with a four bet. He makes it 5.1 million. Yeah. 
Nolan. A shove. Oh. And a call. This could be it. Wait. Oh, sick. No one folded an eight. Hey, you are my lucky chum. I like that. You got it. My lucky chums are here. I cannot lose this one. Yay! Yo, 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 yo! Chawanda, a huge favourite. Lady for the lady, yay! A four to one favourite to win EPT Barcelona. JP, shot for an eight. An eight. Six, six, seven, seven. Six, seven, seven. Seven, eight. Steve has two immediate outs. The flop. Jack Tendus. King! <laughs> Seven. It's, this will go for list if an eight comes. If it's an eight, like, yeah. Deuce on the turn. Who even runs this good? Still two outs for Steve. My lucky time's are here. John Joanda takes it down unless there's an eight on the river. It's a nine. Joanda is the champion. John Joanda finally wins one. Steve Warburton, the runner up. Love you, mate. That's right. Thank you. Yeah, what's, what's, how's the guy? He played well. Yeah. Good guy, man. You played really good. You played really good. All right. You ready to talk about the hand now? Yeah, what do you have? I put it kings to you. What kings? Oh. You have, I right. had your bit, right? Ace of diamonds, king of diamonds. Yeah, I put you on ace, king of ace. I told you, right? I mean, if there's ever a spot to fold kings in, uh, in the... the... John might have folded kings, and it might have looked ridiculous, but the ridiculous kings folder is about to lift an EPT trophy. I fought it kings with him yesterday and he had ace king. Yeah, had ace king? Sick. Right. But it's okay, you got I, him anyway. I, I you know, got him it worked out good. <laughs> nice. John. Yeah. First round's on John. Everyone get down to the casino. On my way. So after the deal that was agreed when we went three-handed, Steve Warburton gets 941,613 euros. John Joanda collects more than a million. He's the EPT12 Barcelona champ. John Joanda, you've uh, finished second in an EPT high roller, second in an EPT main event. You've won so much in your career, you've finally won an EPT main event. Does this actually mean anything to you at this point? Oh yeah, it means a lot to me. I mean, I've been playing poker for 18 years now, but you know, every time you win a big tournament of this uh, magnitude, it's, it's still, you know, you still get the rush, you know? There it is, everybody. Let's get a big round of applause for EPT 12 main event champion, John Juwanda. So, John Juwanda wins the biggest EPT of all time, overcoming a field of nearly 1,700 players to take the first trophy of season 12. Wanda!